Hi everyone, thank you for joining today's short educational video entitled The Correct Approach to Measuring Object Attenuation. My name is Mike Kazimian, Ika House Product Manager at Advanced Network Devices. If you have joined our previous instructional video sessions, thank you and welcome back. If this is your first time joining our short how-to videos, we hope you find it insightful and look forward to see you in our future sessions. You can always be automatically notified of any video upload by clicking on subscribe button on the lower right side of this video. In order to measure attenuation, uh, we need to have the right approach uh, in order to have the right data inputted into the ICAHO Wi-Fi site survey. First, uh, we need certain equipment to be able to do the measurements. Uh, we need a measuring device which measures signal strength. It can be a Kaho Wi-Fi site survey application or any um, mobile device on a smartphone. You need one access point to be used for survey on the stick. It has to be associated to the application which is measuring signal strength. And you need a survey stick tripod or power supply and connection cable. It can be either in a compact Pelican case or it can be in a tripod. This is a typical survey on the stick kit which includes a pole and a stand for the access point as a universal hanging uh, stand. Also the um, solution should have the um, power supply and other equipment to be able to do the proper measurement. Uh, we recommend Hive Radar. You can either purchase it directly or you can go through our company. You can reach us for pricing at info at a-n-d.ca as shown in the lower portion. So typically, once we want to do the measurement, the, uh, initially the intuitive approach is to measure the signal strength in, uh, directly between the uh, access point and the uh, receiver which is measuring signal strength and then move the access point behind an object and make the same measurement. Um, and the difference between the two signal strength measurements should be the um, attenuation of the object which is in between the transmitter and receiver. Let's then define and see what is free space path loss because that becomes critical in understanding how to make the proper measurement. Free space path loss is the loss of the signal strength of an ele ele electromagnetic wave that would result from the line of sight path through free space, which is usually air for our case, with no obstacles nearby to cause reflection or diffraction. When we look uh, and we look, look closely, we see that between the transmitter and receiver, um, the signal gets attenuated and weaker as it passes through a media like an attenuating surface or even air. If we look at the free space path loss characters, characteristics, we see that uh, the signal at the transmitter side has no loss, but in the first one meter significantly loses uh, its signal strength or it gets attenuated and later on it tapers off as we go through uh, between the four to five to six meter range. Therefore, if we go ahead and uh, uh, put the receiver at one meter range, we can see that we can have as much as between the transmitter and receiver, we can have as much as 40 dB loss for the 2.4 gigahertz in the first meter. Now, if we um, have any variation in the exact location, then the resulting loss will be significant. So you can see here as an example, a half a meter variation, which is not much, can make as much as eight dB difference in loss. Therefore, this will not give us very accurate reading because we really don't know exact location that we are at and that's where the signal gets attenuated the most. Now, if we go further down the line and if we make our measurement four to five meters away, uh, we can see that any variation between the same one meter range will have only a one dB variance, which is significant between the receiver and then, or transmitter and the receiver. Um, 
so if we have the same variation and we move the receiver half a meter either way you can see there is not a significant change in the variation of the signal loss in comparison to what we had here 8 db versus half a db which is significant therefore the correct approach is to be at least four to five meters away um, and put the transmitter on one side with no obstructions and the receiver on the other side we have to be associated to that specific access point we make the first measurement then we move the uh, access point to the second location which is behind the obstruction and we make the same measurement and we see a different reading and uh, once we uh, once want to do the calculation we take the first number we subtract it from the second number which actually here becomes addition because of a negative and a negative and we can see the loss uh, of that attenuating surface or object let's go through a live demo of now what we do with what we calculate and what we measure uh, in reference to inputting the data into Ikaha Wi-Fi site survey once we are in Ikaha Wi-Fi site survey and we have all of our data um, we go to the planning mode that's the first thing we need to do then we uh, select the wall attenuation um, to be able to input the data uh, we can see the list of predefined uh, surfaces that are within the Ikaha Wi-Fi site survey and to the right of this field uh, we have the plus a minus and a configuration plus will make a copy of what we select here and minus will remove it and then this is for the configuration details where we can change the attenuation the thickness and then the height and other parameters so what we do is we select any of these uh, existing uh, attenuation surfaces we press plus and we see it's a copy made we rename this in this case i'm going to rename it uh, hospital wall one and we can change the color to something that is more meaningful to us and then we input the attenuating data that we got for that specific wall in this example we had 20 db and then we go to the thickness of the wall and we say the thickness for example was um, quite thick wall it had three bars in it and we say for example 0.75 meter and we can see that we the software will calculate the 26.7 db per meter for attenuation of the this specific uh, surface and it is already added to the database and we can continue doing this until we have completed all of our attenuation surface inputs one uh, thing that needs to be mentioned here is that if you already have a floor plan uh, loaded into the application and you start inputting these attenuating surfaces once you save the file and you open up a blank file um, for the same hospital all of the inputted attenuation surfaces will not exist anymore uh, the software will keep only the ones that are in its database so in order to overcome this uh, problem what we do is we load a blank file first we input all of our attenuation surfaces inside and we save the file under maybe a the file under a template name so we for example call this uh, and it says there's no map we already know that we continue and we call this hospital template and uh, once we do that when we save it then we can always load this file then load our maps and finally save it under a different file so we have this template available at our disposal for um, this specific project this concludes our demonstration of how to properly input the data for and also calculate attenuation of the surfaces and objects that are not within the database of ECAHO. I do thank you for uh, attending this short how-to video. I look forward to see you in the future videos.